The boggers and the bigger diggers are ready to take their first bite of this tender farmland in the Merrimack region of the Show Me State. A new track can yield new speed, but figuring out uncharted territory is never easy. Welcome to the fertile farmlands of the Show Me State. We are in Steelville, Missouri for the third stop of the 2022 MRA Championship Series. Today we're going to be featuring the Open Cut Class. And last time we featured these guys, a guy from north of the border snuck all the way down to Gore Springs, Mississippi to defeat the hometown hero. We'll also have the Outlaw Pro Stocks and the Modifieds coming your way. But with more on what's going on in the Open Class, we're going to send it over to my partner, Doc Riley. Well, MRA racing goes again, and uh, the last time we were out, you ended up picking up a win. Is that kind of settled in, or is that uh, just history? <laughs> it's history. We need to do it again now. What can you do here at a track? First time you've been at this track, brand new track. What are kind of some of the things you look at? We'll take our last races tune up, and we'll be a little bit conservative because we don't know what the track can hold yet. Then the second round, we'll be able to put a little bit more power here. For so round one is kind of a test in tune? Essentially, it is. You know, that's amazing. You come down here, you spend all that time on the road traveling all the way from Canada down here uh, into the Merrimack part of Missouri. And, uh, you know, you got a couple of seconds to run. It seems like a, a test in tune. It, it's probably at a premium. You've got, you got to be able to get a lot of data out of that one run. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. You can't forget to put the data on. That's that's vital. you got to have it. We've also got some pretty good guys with some uh, good set of eyes that can take a look at what the what the car's doing outside. Absolutely. Gary will be watching. He'll, he'll have a good idea what we need to do for the second round. Now, when you come into a brand new facility like this, no, no cars have been down the track yet. Is there anything that you specifically look at as far as the track is concerned? It's got to be tacky. It's got to be it's got to be a thick, heavy uh, soil so we can get some hook. Get some hook. And what about shutdown? Well, shutdown's safe here. I, I've got no worries there. There's there's lots of room. Okay, you know, that's always good to hear when a racer says that, that a lot of room, because a lot of times uh, it really comes up to you to bring that home safely. Yeah, absolutely, and sometimes you do have to get on the throttle to straighten it out, so it's nice to have all this room. Well, we take a look at the bullet here, and uh, kind of give us your thoughts going into this weekend. Well, if we can repeat the same as we did last round, or the last time out, I'll be uh, very ecstatic, because there, there's some good racers here this weekend. Yeah, you know, when you're when you're looking at uh, hundreds that separate you guys, uh, you really have to be on your game. Oh, yeah, sometimes thousands. It's really, really close. Uh, possibility of a record? Uh, I don't know if the track can hold a record. I'll know after the first round. See, it all comes down to that first round. We'll see what happens after he goes down the track the first time. Thanks, as always, Doc. As we take a look at the points in the open cut class coming into today's action, you see Kevin Harrison up on top, followed by Joel Coolidge, 15 points back, Billy Fling, David Hahn out of the state of Hawaii, and uh, Steve Renaud coming on there in the last event. Shane O'Rogie leads the modified paddle class. Right behind him, Greg Booker, who normally runs in the OPS class. Jesse Brown, who also normally runs OPS. He's doing pretty well this year. Keith Mitchell and Ron Dunsavage, though, definitely hard chargers in that class. Booker and Brown are going to have to watch their back door. So is Olrogi. And finally, in the Outlaw Pro Stock class, Jason Shiat has been unbeatable this year. He leads the charge, followed by Greg Martinez, his machine being uh, represented by the Olrogi family with Shane at the wheel of Scream. Jesse Brown. Will Harrison, who is uh, out of competition right now while his truck is being repaired, and Rodney Merritt out of the state of Colorado in Disturb. Now, we head back to the staging area. Now on the starting line, Rick George out of Franklin, Georgia, in a familiar-looking Chevy Colorado called Shag Nasty. He goes side-by-side -side with the man who is right here at home, Greg Booker, the American outlaw, the beautiful Pactina-looking machine. Of course, Rich from Franklin, Georgia. Those who know the history of mud racing Probably recognize the name Franklin, Georgia. He used to host one of the premier mud racing facilities in the country. Let's see what George and Booker have in session one. Track is definitely a little bit dry right now, very dry. A 281 for Booker to take the number one spot. George at a 301. And in 
and we get a look into the timing tent right now as Kim Monsmith and the MRA crew keep track of everything going on here this weekend as the dust settles again. Dry track, we'll see what happens. I guarantee you they're going to be adding some water to this track after this first session of OPS cars. Up next, Larry Jeremiel out of Royal Hondo, New Mexico. The Grouch 2.0 came a long way to race here. Beautiful looking machine from the western states. Don't get to see him very much back east, but being here in the Midwest, he had to come out and run. He's going to go side by side with your points leader, Jason Chaya out of Wayawago, Wisconsin. Gets a lot of help from the racing in the dirt shop just up the road from him in that awesome Ford Hemi powered Lil Crazy Bronco. Gonna go side by side with the man from New Mexico. We will see who can get the power to the track. Will Chaya continue his dominating ways here in 2022 on this brand new track on the series? Jeremio staging a little late there. Beautiful run for Jaya, a 2.57 will indeed take the top spot. It looked like he may have pedaled the car about uh, half track. Watch me, picks up the front end, sets it down right there, and it doesn't look like it hurt his time too much, but I guarantee you that thing has got more in it, especially running here on a dry track. It'll be interesting to see what he can do later on in session two. Mr. Consistent right here. I tell you what, man, Jason, you, you just seem to get up to the line push go and away you go it just seems to be that easy well it's not quite that easy but we're, we keep trying made a couple changes and uh, the changes worked really well tonight and uh, we'll see how the second round goes how tough is it to come to a, a track like this with no data no history no one you can call and say what's it like it's just kind of a, a brand new deal it's kind of tough but on the other, the other side of it everybody has the same track so we've got that going for us so when it's a little different everyone's got to try so get a look at our final pairing here in the Outlaw Pro Stock Class, Jesse Brown in that bright orange Chevrolet out of Waverly, Tennessee. That is Loose Cannon. He's not been having a bad season, but he has not been happy with his performance so far. He says there is plenty more in this truck. He just doesn't have the gearing to get what he wants out of it. He goes side by side with Shane O'Rogi in Scream. That's normally driven by uh, Greg Martinez out of Las Vegas, New Mexico, owned by uh, Greg and Carlos Martinez. 598 cubic inch engine with EFI and nitrous. One of the racing in the dirt cars going side by side with the 715 cubic inch big block Chevy owned by Rocky Brown. Let's see if Brown can speed things up here against a very, very tough Shane Olrogi. Beautiful pair of runs, both in the twos. Olrogi a 261 and Brown with a 287. Not going to get to the number one spot, but nothing to be ashamed of in that pairing once again, making the most of a dry track. And again, I'm going to tell you, they are going to be watering this thing before we get too far into this field. Look at that straight pair of runs for both of those machines. Here's a look at the standings after session one. Jason Chaya on top at a 257, followed closely by uh, Shane O'Rogi there representing Martinez. Greg Booker looking good here at home. Jesse Brown in fourth, and Rick George rounding out the top five here at Booker Farms, Upper Merrimack Dirt Drags in Steelville, Missouri. We are just getting things underway. The big horsepower of the blown alcohol dirt draggers is coming. The open class is next. This Back Channel Productions program is brought to you in part by Monsters Monthly. For up-to-date info, media, and all your other Monster Truck needs, visit MonstersMonthly.com. And by Crush This. For a look inside the world of Monster Trucks, check out Crush This, a Monster Truck podcast.
This Back Channel Productions program is brought to you in part by RPM Army. For a wide array of content from across the motorsports world, visit rpmarmy.com. Your high-performance fix on the go. Welcome back to our coverage of the 2022 MRA Championship Series here at the Upper Merrimack Dirt Drags in Steelville, Missouri at Booker Farms. So we get ready to go with our single pass in the modified class. It's going to be a lopsided matchup here. You see Jesse Brown in the orange Chevy S10. And he goes side by side with Shane Olrogi in his own vehicle. That is deranged. Out of Cleveland, Wisconsin, 760 cube against Goodwin Competition EFI race engines. The induction solutions nitrous setup and uh, odds on favorite in this one has to be the rear engine rail. Let's see though if Jesse Brown can maybe pull an upset here in this session one pairing of the modified class. Olrogi though, as I said, it's gonna be one tough vehicle to get around. We will see as they move into the staging beams for this single pass in session one of the modified paddle. Clearly problems for old Rogie. The 355 won't matter. He let off at about half track. 286 for Brown. Not a bad run considering how outclassed that truck was in this particular session. He's headed back to the pits. Uh, Doc Riley is headed that way. And Scott Olrogi is headed back to figure out what is going on with the deranged car. We'll uh, find out right now. Let's head down to Doc. Well, doing double duty here, man. Let's first of all talk about the first class you were in in that run in round number one. Well, we've been trying to change some stuff up on the truck, and it ain't it ain't working. We don't know really what we got going on right now. It really needs a gear change, but right now with parts, you can't really find any gears. But uh, it it done okay for what we got going on. We're I think we're fourth right now, which is not real good. But two, uh, there's a couple of trucks we shouldn't outrun, so it it's going okay, I guess. Now in the other class, your thoughts about that run? Well, I got I got lucky, and not, I hate to say that with somebody somebody else's misfortune, but uh, if they get, if they get it running even halfway, I, that, it's not going to stand for me to win that. So it it is what it is. I just decided to bump up in it because there wasn't many in it. So well, it gives you another chance to run. Oh yeah, we need all the data right now we can get on it. And make it, it'll help us maybe decide what we need to do to it and see if we can make it any faster. There's that word again, data. The data acquisition definitely important. It may not play as much of a part in the run you just saw for Deranged as we take one more look at it. I believe he may beat himself up when he goes back to the pit area. Air fuel problem that not many people have had. Shane Olrogi is standing by with Doc Riley. Well, it's the third round of MRA Racing, and uh, you're doing double duty again, the customer car. And, of course, you're right. Kind of talk to us about the, uh, the Scream ride, first of all. The Scream is getting really fast. It's getting to be a fun ride. Uh, Greg isn't quite ready to drive it yet. He had a little setback on his back that he had surgery on, um, but we're ready to have him here and soon, hopefully. Uh, just a fun truck, and glad to see it coming around for him. You know what? Uh, that truck looks like it's effortless when it goes down the track. It's it's very easy to drive, which is cool to see. Now, let's go to the other one right here. Derange is being a problem child right now. Uh, we fought a little bit last week, or two weeks ago in Mississippi, and now we're fighting a little bit now. Um, we're trying to find the root of the issue, and we're going to work through it. Is it different between the setup between these two cars? Do you think there's anything with that, or is it just specific to this car? It's specific to this car. Just for having some sensor issues and et cetera. Electronics. Gotta love it. Gotta love it. In one end, we've been talking about it, data acquisition is so important, but electronics can also be one of those bad things we don't like to talk about until we figure out what it is and we fix it. Well, trying to work out some uh, new bugs in that car. If you can spot the mistake they made, feel free to leave it down in the uh, comments, but... Uh, uh, again, I think when they watch this back, they're going to be kicking themselves. Right now, though, we move on to the open class. Here you see Mark Riggin. Our first look at him, though. He ran earlier this year in Oklahoma out of Lockhart, Texas. The lone Chevy in the field going side-by-side -side with the lone 481X of Steve Renault out of Horn Payne, Ontario. Guy came a long way to race here. Came a long way to race last week. He's getting a lot of help, though, from a legend of mud racing and now dirt drags. Gary Baker, the founder of the NMRO, years back. And Gary, 
been awesome to see him here trackside. Let's see, though, what our first pair of open cars can do with this new track surface. This is a very different surface, this farmland here underneath. It's, uh, for lack of a better word, it's actually kind of squishy here. So let's see if they can get in record territory. Trying to get a hold of the track, a 226 for Renault and a 244 for Riggin. So Steve gonna run the faster of those two times in the black car called Frantic out of Ontario. Guarantee you there's more in that track than they just got out of it again. Probably needs a little bit of water. Right now though, Doc Riley is headed down into the Lone Star pit area to talk to Mark Riggin who just ran another bad habit. All the way from Texas up here to the part of the world they call the Merrimack Valley and uh, just your thoughts on that run. Um, well, we're going to try to pick it up this next run. We we're a little bit slow on it, but uh, yeah, I got all these boys out here with these Hemis and uh, the only Chevrolet, so I'm going to try to give them a little bit of a show. We'll see what happens. Yeah, there's always the next round and uh, everyone's on the same page here. You know, this right. is the first time that anyone's gone into round two. That's true. That's true. So. Uh, We'll see what happens. We'll, we'll juice it up a little bit and maybe I can surprise somebody. Head back to the starting line now. There's a look at Greg Monsmith out of Warsaw, Indiana. Holds a track record down in Sanford, North Carolina. And Daryl Jones is stomping ground. 520 cubic inch. Brad Anderson Hemi with an 1871 roots blower. He believes in that kind of horsepower. He goes side by side with another racing in the dirt machine, just like Steve Renault and Frantic at a very different power plant. This is a 500 cubic inch uh, Allen Johnson performance engine with a 1471 Whipple supercharger up on top. That's Joel Coolidge, the father of the father-son race team. There you see Tyler who will be driving this vehicle in the paddle tire class tomorrow. Nightmare 6 out of Two Harbors, Minnesota. These guys are good friends off the track, but you'll hear a lot of smack talk back there when they are getting ready to run. A very different pair of cars right here in every way. This vehicle much wider than the vehicle you see in the other lane. Different power plant, different weight balance. Let's see who has the combination to get the job done here in session one of the open cut tire class. There's the upper Merrimack dirt drag. Well, just as they stage, Monsmith backs off. Apparently a problem with the staging lights. We'll get that fixed. Doc Riley has wandered down into the frantic pits. Let's hear from Doc. We're going to see if we can just sneak right in here and look over Gary Baker's shoulder. We're not going to look at anything spectacular or anything. But, Gary, y you have got a unique perspective because you're outside the driver's seat. What did you see in that first pass? Well, Steve picked uh, right in the middle of the track, and we had just it started spinning after he left. It hooked pretty good when he left, so we're, we're just going to have to get a little more aggressive out of the gate with it. That's what we're looking at the info now. And uh, it, it really, the track could use more water. You know, it's tough when you've never been to a place, there's no history, there's no other runs here. You guys are the first ones out. You know, that's, that's got to be kind of a tough situation. Well, you take the data you got, you look at the dirt, we did some talking, and uh, we just, you gotta, you gotta throw something at it to start with. So we got our base and uh, hey, we'll see how we do the second pass. What are some of the, and you don't have to give me any numbers, but what are some of the data things that you look for? Oh, we look at the drive shaft speed. We look at the engine RPM. Uh, we look at where if we, we break loose going down the track. They've got, the data systems these days are pretty good, but that just gives you so much of the picture. Then it, you, you gotta rely on instinct and, and what you've done before at other tracks and how the track looks. So. It's a, uh, it's 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 hard to get one to react the same every time. You just gotta work at it. Well, we'll let them get back to work. I tell you, it is amazing what you've been able to do with data acquisition and be able to look at it right away after the run. Again, no one's been here to Booker Farms before. This is virgin territory. And Steve, the first one out there, you can guarantee one thing: when they come back in round number two, they'll have something figured out, and hopefully for the better. Interesting insight what these guys are doing with this new track. I have a feeling that this track is going to be record setting when we come back here in October. Now back on the line with the second pair of session one in the open class. Sideways run for Coolidge, but a 2-2-2. Two, 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 and he just ran over 100 miles an hour, I believe, 
110 if uh, what we're hearing is correct. He just ran a 110 mile an hour pass. Now that does not equate to fast time if he can't put it into the track. But he looks like he did indeed get that into the track. And it's uh, causing a little bit of chatter there on the starting line. That means this track will hold more horsepower. Again, we'll see what happens when they add a little moisture. Doc Riley headed down to talk to Joel Coolidge. Well, the nightmare is one good-looking car, and I tell you, great pass, man. Unofficially, 110 miles an hour, if that means anything. That's pretty fast, and on cut tires. Very quick. You know, I've been asking everybody, it's the first time you guys have been here. There's no data, there's no history. Yeah. Well, what do you kind of look for when you come to a track and it's your first pass? Uh, from the last previous races. Take a guess. A guess, huh? Yeah. Well, you've got it dialed in pretty well here. Well, it's not me. It's the, my kid on his laptop, tuning in it. That's what it's come down to, is yep. a kid on a laptop. Yep, I'm just driving. Yeah, but there's a lot to it. I mean, you got your hands full and you're going that fast and covering that much ground in that much uh, short of time. Oh, yeah, your hands are full. Any major adjustments for next round? Not that I know of yet. That's right, we're still waiting for the, we're still waiting for the laptop. Yep, he's pulling data now. It's amazing we get back to that data acquisition because that can make the difference between first and second or hundreds of seconds that can separate the winner from the also rams. It was interesting during that interview, you saw Tyler back there with the laptop and then over Tyler's shoulder was another second generation driver, Shane O'Rogi with the laptop. Now, here's our first look at Jeremy Hood behind the wheel of Kevin Harrison's Never Enough machine. That's your points leader. He stages side by side with the defending champ in this and the paddle tire open class. That being Billy Fling in the uh, Brasket Race Cars built reality check. The uh, Buckeye uh, Bomber right here. He and his brothers uh, Dale and Steve and their buddy Dan fielding this vehicle, the 581 cubic inch Hemi. On side by side with Jeremy Hood with that Eric Bidlack racing chassis, a screw bone, 527 moon and race engine, that billet block, Aussie horsepower going side by side. Pair of Hemis here in session one, third pairing of the day. Fling goes flying out the end of the track and problems evident for Jeremy Hood. Had a good reaction time, but didn't get him anywhere. A 2-2-6 for Fling, a good run. Not gonna take the top spot, look at that. Another blower belt for this car. You can see the pulley just spinning around there on the front of the blower. Right there in front of that uh, blanket and the uh, straps that keep that thing attached to that car weren't to explode. Now, that's not a huge problem when the blower belt comes off, but considering you only get two passes per class, that can be deadly to your points hopes and uh, to the big money here at uh, Steelville, Missouri. Let's get another look at it. It went away immediately right out of the hole. It blows the tires off. I'm amazed he got down the track as far as he did with that problem. In the meantime, Doc Riley is headed down into the reality check pit area to talk to the defending champ from 2021, Billy Blaine. Well, right in the thick of things, man, you're kind of sticking with it. Just your thoughts on that run. Ah, uh, hanging in there. We kind of blew the tires off there, so we're going to pull the plugs, check them out, see if we can throw a little bit more to her, and come back around, try her again. How tough is it when you come to a place you've never been to before? Very tough. I mean, you just don't know the track. The track differs even in the same place the next race, so it all differs. What do you look for when you get to a get to a facility like this? Do you look at the track, give it a good hard look or anything, or do you just kind of have to take what it is? Yeah, you got to take what it is, but I do look at the track, see what we want to do, and then I go out and look at the shutdown, see where I'm going to be stopping at. That's equal important out there. It's amazing how relaxed these guys are. Both of them blew the tires off on the starting line. I have to imagine if this car here had gotten down the track, uh, they would have been looking to put a lot more horsepower into it because when he left the line, he spun there for just a second. Then you see the car owner getting his driver backed into the pit area so they can take a look at it. And look at that blower belt shredded. Doc Riley headed over to talk to Jeremy Hood right now. Well, you know, Harrison Logan, one week you guys were on top of your game, but last the last time you were out, a blower belt, looks like that's what happened again yes, tonight. Sir. We don't know why, what's causing the failure because we changed the pulleys. We did find a crack in the last pulley, so we swapped it out. We have no idea because that was a brand new belt with two passes on it. Yeah, when I was over here earlier today, kind of making my meander through the pits, I'm like, that's a brand new belt, pretty, should have no problem with it whatsoever, but if it's one of those little things, man, you'll just have to look. Yes, sir, but we're going to try to get after the next round. Don't you worry. 
Confident, can't shake the confidence at all as the crew goes to work, taking a look and seeing if there was any other damage. Here's a look at the standings right now in the open cut tire class, the 110 mile per hour pass working out for Joel Coolidge at a 225, followed closely by Billy Fling at a 263, and then uh, three thousandths of a second off of his time is Steve Renault down there in third place, followed by Greg Monsmith and Mark Riggin, the points leader, nowhere to be found. He did not even make it through the traps. So we're going to re-rack them. They are going to add a little moisture to this track, and we'll be back for session two in just a moment from right here in Steelville. Hey, welcome to Wild Man Adventures. Heard the Silver Lake Sand Dragway. There really wasn't any off-roading back then. It was all off-road. We're on our way to Lima, Ohio. That wouldn't be old. Oh, it's slippery. It's all good on it. Hey, we're here with Rich Cummins. Hey, we're here with Mike Potter. Hey, we're here with Al Pizzo. We gotta check it out. This week, we're gonna go down memory lane. Welcome back to Steelville, Missouri. Booker Farms here with the Upper Merrimack Dirt Drags, continuing our coverage of the 2022 MRA Championship Series back in the Outlaw Pro Stock class. Jesse Brown to the left of your screen in the right lane against Shane O'Rogi. To the right of your screen in the left lane, getting started with session number two. Another great pair of runs, a 2-5-9. Shane O'Rogi, a great run right there and nothing to be disappointed about from Jesse Brown. Again, though, looking for just a little bit more speed in that beautiful bright orange truck out of the Volunteer State. Nice straight run for both of those guys, though. Can't take anything away from Brown. Again, I think by the end of the year, he is going to be one of the top runners in this thing. He's not sitting far down in points right now. As long as he sticks with it, he's going to be a threat. Here comes Jason Chaya back to the line out of uh, Weyawega, Wisconsin, about an hour west of Green Bay with that Bronco call, a little crazy. That uh, Tony Bischoff Ford Hemi. This machine currently holds three national records, two 150-foot records in both Pro Stock and OPS and a 180-foot record in OPS. He goes side by side with the man out of Arroyo Hondo, New Mexico out of Taos County, the 622 cubic inch engine inside that beautifully wrapped Chevrolet Colorado called Grouch 2.0. See if the man from cold country can get it done again. Leaves the line all by his left, and here comes Jeremio. Three oh four, not gonna get what he wanted, but he let Jaya go ahead and go. You don't have to leave on the green unless you want the extra hundred dollar uh, reaction time bonus, but he wasn't worried about it. A good pair of runs right there, but Jason Chaya is definitely unstoppable on this day here in Steelville. His dominance continuing right here with the 2022 MRA Championship. Here comes Shag Nasty back to the line. Rick George. Out of Franklin, Georgia. Machine owned by George Farms. He goes side by side with Greg Booker from right here in Steelville. The last time we saw Greg was out in Transfer, Pennsylvania, and he detonated his transmission and driveline. Did not get down the track. Now he's here at home and he's making some good runs. Let's see what he has here for Rick George. and a 281. Neither of those guys are going to be happy with those times. Both of them, though, probably glad to get through the shutdown area clean again. George with a problem coming off the line. Watch it again. The vehicle will pitch off to his left. He actually has to try to drive it around. It's an indication they're having a suspension problem. They may need to do a little bit of work to that thing uh, before they come back and run in the Pro Stock class tomorrow. Here is a look at our final standings. Jason Chaya with that 
Greg Martinez is screen machine driven by Shane O'Rogi at a 259. Greg Booker at 281. Brown and Rick George rounding out the field. Chaya far and away ahead of the class one more time. Well, congratulations. Another victory. Yeah, thank you. That was a, it was a fun pass. You know, the, the sun went behind the trees. It cooled off a little bit. Did that help at all? I think it helped a little bit. It looked like everybody, everybody got a little bit faster second round. So it was much more comfortable, too. You know, you are so consistent, and you still picked up a couple hundreds. Yeah, we keep making just tiny little changes, just seeing what they do, and uh, they went in the right direction today. Well, you know, next time out, maybe you'll have the same result, but right now, uh, you're a king of the world. It's, it's kind of fun. <laughs> it's kind of fun. Big target on my back, I guess. But we'll keep trying. A little bit cooler air and a lot more clump in that dirt definitely helping right now. Again, the ground underneath of the soil they're running on here where they tilled it up. First off, the soil is very rich. This is a very fertile farmland they're running on here. The ground, when you walk on it, is very bizarre. It sinks, it molds, it bends. And uh, it's, as I said before, for lack of a better word, it is a squishy territory we're on here. I think that may end up equating to a national record before this season is up. We'll see if it happens this weekend. I have my doubts that it'll go that way, but we will see right now as we get our final pass in the Modifieds with a smoking Shane Rogi and Deranged. He will get the job done and pick up the win at a 2-5-0, but that is not a good run right now. That's not a happy car by any stretch of the imagination. He'll take it back to the pit area and try to get it ready for tomorrow for his father to run in the cut tire modified class as we take a look at a good crowd on Hey, Doc Riley hanging out over by the uh, timing tent area. They're going to reset the clocks, do a little track grooming, and we will be back to wrap things up with the open class. Here in Steelville, stay with us. Welcome back to the Show Me State, Booker Farms here in Steelville, Missouri for round number three of the 2022 MRA Championship Series, the open class. Coming back to the line to do battle here on the cut tires. There you see Jeremy Hood, the points leader, the never enough machine taking on the defending champ from 2021. That is Billy Fling in reality check. Hood with that uh, Aussie powered Bill at block 527 cubic inch race engine and that rear engine rail going against the front engine reality check. Two Hemi powered machines ready to go to work here for the first pass of the session number two in the open class. We will see if Hood can get down the track in one piece. They have been having so much trouble with blower belts on this car this year. Let's see what he can do right here with a freshened up car in session two. Got him down the track, a 229 for Hood. Not what he was looking for, but much better than that first round performance. A 225 for Fling. Gonna hold him in second place right now in reality check as Joel Coolidge continues to lead with that 2225. Another look there, look at Jeremy Hood putting the horsepower to the ground. When that car does get down the track, he gets down the track quick. That Eric Bidlack built never enough. From Grenada, Mississippi, looking good. Here in session two, is it, it's getting a little dark, it's getting a little cooler out, and that helps these big blower motors make horsepower. Here comes Greg Monsmith out of Warsaw, Indiana. Greg ran a uh, 243 in the first round. 
going side by side with this man right here we're in a 110 mile an hour pass and as I said earlier that speed does not necessarily equate to quick time the speed just tells you how fast you were going when you got through the clock so if you can't get that horsepower to the ground you pull the tires off on the starting line it doesn't matter how fast you go through the timing lights at the end so you need to be quick and fast in this game of hundreds and thousands and even ten thousands of seconds here we go now with uh, two of the fastest cars in the class pair of hemi powered machines on the line mon smith to the left of your screen in the right lane coolidge leading the class right now to the right of your screen in the left lane as we look opposite the cars back up toward the starting line That looks fast. Cool. It's trying to go quicker than a 225, and he does it. A 219. And it looks like he picked up a little mile an hour there. So he is getting that power to the track as he is going quick and fast. And there are some big problems on Greg Monsmith's car. He just tore a drivetrain apart. There you see uh, the track crew picking up what appears to be a, uh, a guard there, a coupler or something. I'm not sure. A shredded piece of metal, though, out from under that car is the last thing Greg Monsmith wanted to see. He had to wait so long to get that rear engine rail back out here on the track. And uh, it looks like his weekend may have come to a premature end. We hope not, but if the damage is as severe as it looked, then uh, he may not be back tomorrow. Here's another look at it. Watch Coolidge get off the line. Watch the car nearest the camera, though. Sets it down right there. It looks like he tore the uh, drivetrain clean apart as parts we're coming out from under that car as he went into the shutdown area and unfortunately it looks like that may be the end of Greg Monsmith at least for a little while here on the MRA 2022 series. Not been his year as it took him a while to even get here and now he's going to be going back to the trailer trying to get repaired. Now, a pair of oddball engines, a Chevrolet and the uh, Mark Riggin machine, that's the red rear engine rail on the far side over there and then this awesome machine out of Hornpain, Ontario. This is another Racing in the Dirt chassis, but he runs a uh, 481X 526 cubic inches prepared by Atchison Machine Service out of uh, London, Ontario. Let's say billet aluminum block. Uh, Allen Johnson Performance Engines forms those blocks, and uh, their construction makes them about as close as to indestructible as you're going to get. The problem is, is they give up a little bit on the top end. They make their best performance on the low end, so they can give up a little bit of speed, but... Renaud believes in this combination. He and Gary Baker said they're going to make it work. Let's see what he has here against Mark Riggin. Not going to get fast time, but it wasn't a bad run. 2-2-5. Seems to be a popular run here. Very consistent bunch of runs. Riggin runs a 2-5. So, uh, again, these guys looking good here tonight. That means Billy Fling is going to go into the runner-up spot. Joel Coolidge is going to take the victory. Doc Riley standing by with your runner-up, Billy Fling. Well, a brand new track. The first time you've made any passes. Just kind of your thoughts on uh, that class. I thought it went pretty well. Um, they put some water on there, helped the dust down a lot, but uh, some, for some reason it jumped on the line and lost some of the time, so we ended up pulling seconds, so I think it'd be all right. That's pretty good, and actually you, you improved a little bit after uh, round one. Yeah, we did. We did. I did a little bit of tuning on it, too, so yeah, it should have increased a little. Not a bad weekend for Billy Fling, running the second spot there at a 2-2-5. Again, a popular time with the 2-2s, two Steve Renaud, Jeremy Hood, and Greg Monsmith rounding out the field. Jeremy Hood, by the way, got the reaction time bonus at a .0618 second reaction time. So he was very fast on that light in spite of finishing at the bottom. Joel Coolidge leading the field out of Steelville today. He's standing by with Doc. Well, you got to love it. The history books is going to say that you won the class here, the very first class here. Nice, nice run. Congratulations. Thank you. It felt good. It looked good. It looked like it came off the line. It your launches are almost different than anyone else. Yeah, it's different. It's the two-step and then the nitrous kicking in on top of the blower. Must have helped putting a little water on there, too. Oh, yeah, it really helped. Man, both of your runs were over 100 miles an hour. Second one, 112, I think. Yeah, 112. It put me in the seat. <laughs> well, that's good. You know that you're onto something good there when that happens. Oh, yeah. yeah miracle two weeks getting this thing back together after Mississippi. It was tore apart pretty good. What, what really did you have to do on it? 
new transmission, dry shafts, bunch of wiring and sensors. Wiring and sensors, it's always that data acquisition yeah. stuff. You need it right there. Congratulations, man. Thank nice you. job. Thank you. It felt good. Yeah. Well, from the scrap heap to the winner's circle, Joel Coolidge now leads the open cut tire class by 20 points over Jeremy Hood and Billy Fling, who is now tied for second place with Jeremy Hood. They are moving on that Grenada, Mississippi base never enough team with all the problems that they've had. Steve Renault jumps up into the number four spot after a victory last time out in Mississippi. And Mark Riggin now sits in the number five spot, rounding out the top five. We'll see if David Hahn comes back on later in the season. It's been a great weekend so far. We still have more to go tomorrow. The open class cars put on the paddle tires, the modifieds put on the cut tires, and the outlaw pro stocks go just pro stock. We will see you next time.